Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this video is for everybody who is feeling confused. <laughs> um, really what this video, it's going to be a tarot reading, but that is just disguising the energy transmission that is transmitting the frequencies that will help you make peace with confusion. I have been on quite a journey today. I woke up feeling <laughs> completely overwhelmed, um, completely confused, like utterly confused to the point where I kind of just felt like I was drowning and I wanted to just throw in the towel and I just kind of felt like giving up on everything. Um, it was <laughs> it was really overdramatic and melodramatic and I was like, you know, in the back of my head I knew that this was just a, like an energy I was digesting and trying to move through and I learned some things in the process. First of all, um, I happened to be filming this on, um, let me think, September 14th, 2021. And today the sun in Virgo is opposite Neptune in Pisces, which is the astrological cause of all of this confusion. And it, I clued in today that all of the inner planets have been transiting over um, like across from, right, across from Neptune. So we've been kind of getting a deluge of this confusing, oceanic, <laughs> like deep, watery, overwhelming, drowning type of Neptunian energy. It's been going on for a bit, but it's climaxing today. So, you know, for anybody watching that kind of around when I post it, there you go. But of course, for most of you are going to be watching this in my future. And don't worry about what like is causing this because that's actually one of the things you want to stop doing if you want to make your peace with confusion is stop trying to figure out like what's doing it. Um, so one thing I will say that has helped me today kind of make my peace with this feeling is uh, the first thing I did was realize that, okay, I have to stop trying to solve problems. I have to stop trying to figure out what's going on. I need to just sit and feel the confusion, right? Feel confused, be confused, feel like feel it. I had to just sit there and feel all of the confusion. And then I just like instinctively focused on a point above my head, about like 30 centimeters or a foot above my head. And I just focused on that and just focused on that point. And I could feel myself kind of rising up out of the confusing mess and that really helped. So I think that's one thing that you can do is just anything that's above you, right? When you're confused, that's your mind pulling you down into the 3D and trying to make you sort out 3D problems. And that is never going to solve the confusion. That's just going to perpetuate your struggle, right? So focus on something above you, metaphorically, literally, whatever. Um, I've also been using the image of, of like the violet flame above my head and just focusing on that. You can focus on the sun. You can focus on your favorite higher dimensional being source itself. Literally anything that is that just gets you in that feeling of rising up. Just focus on that. Focus on that and breathe into that. That really helped me. Second of all, understand that if you are struggling in this kind of pit of confusion, um, that's actually because you are very smart, <laughs> intelligent, um, inquisitive, and but also a little bit controlling <laughs> and a little bit um, sitting in your anxieties and your, your fears. And believe it or not, you can live in a constant state of confusion and not mind it one bit. Like, um, if you're like me, and if you're watching this video, you're probably like me, you know, I, I view confusion as the enemy and it's something that is a problem to be solved because I'm always trying to solve problems. That's, you know, that is kind of a problem I have, but I'm always trying to solve problems. So I see confusion as a problem. I realized today, my husband showed me, um, like just because I was just watching him live his life. And I realized um, that he lives in a constant state of perpetual confusion, what I would call confusion and chaos, but to him it is perfectly normal and doesn't bother him at all because he has been having a fantastic day and even though I can tell t to me I would label him as confused today but it's not bothering him at all he thinks it's totally normal he's having a great day and I noticed this when he he said the funniest thing to me <laughs> he said um but isn't rice a vegetable <laughs> okay <laughs> that was one of the first things he said when he got up this morning but isn't rice a vegetable and of course I cracked up laughing and was like well I mean rice is a it, it's not a vegetable, you know, dearest husband, but it is a plant. Is that what you meant? Like rice is a plant. <laughs> and, um, 
but that 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 sentence that question he asked me but isn't rice a vegetable just kind of clued me in going okay like I can just it's okay to just kind of be in the confusion because that is just a different type of energy and I can just be okay with that and all of this just kind of helped me um, really come out of this weird pit of despair I was in when I felt like I wanted to give up just because I felt confused and I had been focusing on just feeling the confusion being okay with it and then like rising up out of it but not to escape it right and not to escape it that's the trick if you're if you want to focus on like the violet flame above your head don't even don't even really do it with an agenda just focus on it just just put your awareness on it just focus on it and naturally your energy will shift because of that um don't don't try to like escape the confusion don't try to like leave your body it's just moving your awareness to a place where you kind of become peaceful in your state of confusion, in your state of chaos. So just gonna, just got the Rider Waite tarot because I feel like <laughs> keeping things simple, I guess. Um, I don't want to over, I don't want to unnecessarily complicate anything right now. You know what? This is the second time this Ten, ten of Cups, okay? Uh, when I picked up this deck, which I have not used in a long time, um, this was at the bottom of the deck and it came up just now. So guys, it's all going to be good. <laughs> 10 of cups, happiness, perfect harmony, perfect e emotional fulfillment and abundance. The 10 of cups is one of the best cards. Um, <laughs> you see these people, you know, have their arms up like that and you can't see, but I was, I actually had my, my left arm was like up. I'm holding it like that. Cause that's how it makes me feel. In fact, if you want to put, you know, put your arms up like that in a big V above your head, um, <laughs> that, that feels like a good thing to do. That, that is a good like posture exercise, I think, to make yourself feel that you're just liberated and good with everything and, um, focusing your awareness on higher things. So that's. I'm just going to put that there. I don't have any particular... I don't really know what I'm doing, basically. I'm just drawing some cards. I think this is going to be pretty short. But I just felt like getting this out there. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> Five of Pentacles. Where a lot of us are kind of feeling... Um, I was in this energy yesterday. Feeling that destitution and lack mentality. Feeling that lack mentality. Like root chakra problems, right? Um worrying about money, worrying about the future, worrying about what other people are thinking of you, worrying about random health problems cropping up out of nowhere. This is like worrying, worrying, worrying. And I keep having this experience where every time I think I've healed my root chakra, I just find out that it is like still so messed up, right? Um, Part of the confusion, part part of your problem with confusion is because when you feel confused, it's because you're sensing frequencies of chaos and you have learned from all of your past lives that when earth is chaotic, bad things happen to you, right? Bad things happen to you. When earth is chaotic, bad things happen to you. But that is a frequency that you need to let go of. So if you're feeling like root chakra issues being triggered, if you're feeling, you know, the scarcity mentality and the lack of security and lack of safety... That is like one more time, <laughs> one more time coming up for more of that to release, more of that to release. And I don't know if we will ever come to a place in this lifetime where we will have like sufficiently cleared our root chakras. I don't know. Like, but every month, every month, our root chakras become more and more healed and more and more clear, right? More and more healed and more and more clear. But that means that it's like, <laughs> you, 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 you can feel that, um, are you serious? This problem again type of feeling. Um, also for whenever you're watching this, this can be due to any retrogrades that are happening. I mean, there's at least one retrograde going most of the time, right? Um, right now when I'm filming this, there's a lot and it is kind of giving us a look back to even a few years ago. This is even going back like three years. Like that's how it's been in my personal life anyway. I've been having root chakra problems come up from three years ago. And um, that's really triggering for me, right? I feel like, oh my God, is it happening again? Is it happening again? No, no, it's not happening again. It is just, um, it's like a bad dream. It's a bad dream that is 
that you're able to look at one more time while you say like while while you say your farewell to it. Page of Wands. This is like violet flame energy to me right now. You're transmuting all of that. You know, I it, it's funny actually. A couple of years ago, I used to work a lot with the violet flame and then I kind of entirely forgot about it and it just popped into my head literally today. So that tells me that there's a lot of like deep, like deep, like, what am I trying to say? Stuff that has been lodged deep down inside of your system for like a really long time and that you haven't been able to get out. It, that's the stuff that is coming to clear out and it's so deeply embedded into you that it, it's really going to help you if you want to work with the violet flame. And if this is, you know, if you're new to this kind of stuff and you don't know anything about the violet flame, you don't need to know anything about it in order to use its benefits or, you know, to work with it. Just know that the violet flame is a spiritual energy that is there to help transmute lower energies, um, help you release them, and then bring in the higher vibrational energies, right? It's all about alchemy and transmutation. And just imagine a violet flame and you can put it in your imagination. Just use your imagination, put it on anything that you want to release, right? Um, earlier, actually, uh, I was just like imagining my whole family sitting in it and we're just blazing away, blazing the violet flame. So, <laughs> and that is helping me because this morning I was really like, I wanted to get up, I, like to give up, right? I wanted to give up. I had a total couple hours there where I just felt like giving up on everything. It was really like, <laughs> it was a feeling I haven't had in a long time, um, but that I used to be in for most of the time and I haven't felt that way in a long time. So it kind of... Um, made me worry that I was going to be feeling that way for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, but it, as it turned out, that black pit of despair that that I used to get stuck in for sometimes months at a time, really, it only lasted like six hours. So <laughs> know that, you know, you have the power, you have the ability to shift out of whatever kind of state you're in, whatever lower vibrational state you're in, you can shift out of it way faster than you ever have before. Like, you know, quantum leap out of it if you want to. Just focus on the violet flame, wrap it around yourself. Four of Swords. Yeah, healing, right? This is healing to the point that is a deep, like comatose healing. Um, the first thing that popped into my head when I said that was my grandmother, when... She was young when she was in her 20s. Um, this was like in the 60s in rural Canada, in a small town in rural, rural Canada. She had, uh, she had um, cancer. I don't even know what type of cancer it was because they never told her that she had cancer. They just told her that she had a diseased womb. And that, that like, again, like this was the 60s in rural Canada. They didn't like... <laughs> um, you know, treat treat these things the way I guess we would treat them now, right? They didn't even have chemo. Um, she had to have a total hysterectomy. And the reason I'm telling this story is because she was in a coma after her hysterectomy for eight days, right? Eight days. And I can only imagine, like, what kind of a deeply, like, deep, what kind of energy work was happening to her when, when she was in that eight-day-long coma, right? Of course, this was her body uh, trying to not die from this horrible primitive surgery that was being done to her and her body trying to recover from the cancer but you know i i know now that she must have been undergoing like this massively intense energy work and that was a major turning i know i know her story i know that that was a massive turning point in her life when she left behind an entire lifetime of abuse and poverty and struggle and then after that everything changed and in fact the course of our entire family's trajectory changed because after that um you know she was able to get away from an abusive husband and then my mother you know was able to have you know the man that my mother grew up knowing as her as her dad right and of course that directly affects me because since my mom was able to have a proper childhood then i was able to have a proper childhood and all of that so i think the reason this this my grandma's story is coming to mind here is because that's how deep this healing goes okay um cleaning deep deep 
deep cancerous toxic substances like deep 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 um and to the point where this is like a the fulcrum point the turning point the tipping point of this could be not just the tipping point of your entire life as you go through this deep comatose type of healing period um but this is also the turning point of your entire lineage right like your entire ancestry your ancestors and then your descendants this is where everything can shift um so if you do feel like you're in a coma for eight days you know hopefully no one's actually in a coma but you know you might feel like staying in bed for a week or something like that um allow that because the energy work that is being done on you the healing like the the, the very literal healing that higher you know your star family that your soul family that all the higher beings are doing on you is deep like deep 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 that's why this four of swords this person on here always looks dead right the person looks dead because they almost died they almost died in battle they had like you know a wound that was so deep that cut them right to the heart and they almost didn't survive but they're in this comatose state in this deep fugue state of healing and somebody might actually look at this person and think that they're dying right or this is even the feeling i kind of felt this morning when i just wanted to give up right it can feel like this is it this is done but no because after that you wake up from your coma and you rise and then everything is fresh and clear yeah <laughs> yes there we go thank you cards yes perfect ace of pentacles <laughs> this could not be more perfect after your deep like deep transcendental healing a fresh start a new reality ace of pentacles a new reality that's earth energy that is the new earth that is like to me the ace of pentacles is becoming the card of the new earth and the earth is in the palm of your hands <laughs> king of swords <sighs> to me to uh, lately lately i've been feeling sananda's energy uh like connecting with me a lot um just last week actually um i did a channeled somebody channeled sananda daniel scranton channeled sananda and did this really really deep healing process that hit me really hard and um lately for me the king of swords has been sananda's energy essentially so this is <sighs> stepping into your enlightenment stepping into your higher mind um also this is like arcturian energy right the arcturian higher mind um really seeing everything with a newfound sense of clarity from that higher perspective knowing that this is like seeing beyond all states of polarity being able to see the light in the darkness and being able to see the darkness in the light and then being able to see that all things are equal and rising up above all of it and realizing that everything like everything is the same everything is you everyone is you everything is one a new understanding a deeper like embodied like an embodied understanding of the law of one embodied as an understanding of the law of one because i'm sure you guys know that you've been able that you can feel how these things work right we often have an understanding first we get it into our minds and it's just kind of running in our human mind as you know we read something and like all like you know all is one <laughs> we kind of okay we get that in our minds and then it slowly trickles down and then we get a more expansive understanding of that in our minds but we don't really like really have a full experience of understanding it fully and embodying it until it starts to trickle down right it needs to trickle down get into our hearts and then even beyond that it needs to get down into our bodies so that when we are walking around in our human bodies we really feel on every level with all of our senses we completely understand and feel that we understand the law of one not just understanding it in our minds right because I just know from my experience that, you know, I'd always heard that expression, you know, you are another me and I am another you. And I kind of, you know, got that in my, like, in my human mind, but <laughs> I didn't really get it, right? I thought I understood it. And that's the thing. We, we, we often think we understand something and we kind of do. We do on the level of our human minds. But when you really feel that get into your bones, like into your flesh, into your cells, into your heart, into your root chakra, right? Once you get that down in there, 
then you realize that, oh, I didn't really understand it before. I just had it in my head, but that was still good because that was the stepping stone. But it's because this energy is all like coming down, like, like filtering down through your crown and then down through all of your chakras and then down into the earth. This is part of embodying all this energy. <sighs> and so luckily... The feelings of confusion and chaos, the scarcity mentality, the root chakra problems, also the, sac the sacral problems, um, simply because of the example I had uh, with my grandma, her story, obviously, you know, to do with a hysterectomy that is like sacral chakra issues. And l like last week, I had a healing on my sacral and root, and I really felt that they were like connected that like my issues with one chakra were closely connected with the other and that they need to heal together so all of this stuff all of this stuff whatever you guys are going through the confusion the the problems the blah 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 the deep fugue state of healing it it all comes through out to <laughs> new earth <laughs> and newfound embodied clarity of your higher mind literally downloading your higher mind into your body so the confusion does not last, guys. <laughs> the clarity that you seek is coming, but first, first get okay with being unclear. I think because your higher mind exists in that state of unity, right? It is not concerned with polarities. It can see everything. It can see everything. It has a completely holistic, unified vision so as you're downloading that and as you're integrating that you can feel completely directionless because you're becoming non-linear and because you are like I, how, how do i describe <laughs> like, it's like you know before you were walking down a path of stepping stones in one direction right and maybe sometimes you could go left or you could go right, or you could go straight, but that was it. It was just like that. Those were your dimensions, right? But now y you will like this is what you're transitioning into. Instead of just going in those four directions, you can go in like infinite directions in all directions, right? It's like if you could fly all of a sudden, right? You could go up into any direction. But it's even way beyond that because that's only a 3D metaphor. Of this is of course a multi-dimensional experience that you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't have words to describe what it is what it is like to navigate like 12 dimensions, right? What I don't know what that is. I mean, we can feel it. We can feel it and that's what you're going to be doing. <laughs> Let go of a fixed plan. Allow for spontaneity and growth. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> we know we are confused and we're trying to make our peace with the confusion. <laughs> so we are letting go of a fixed plan. We are allowing for spontaneity and growth. Yes. Stay strong, be a guiding light, ground yourself, be love. For some of you, well, I mean for everybody, right? But for some of you, if the, the uh, feeling of um, focusing on something above your head, if that doesn't seem to help you make your peace with confusion, maybe for some of you, a more emotional exercise will work better when you just focus on love. Just focus on love. Ground yourself, be love, be the love you want to experience in the world. And interestingly, a be a guiding light. I mean, you guys are all light workers here to guide the rest of the collective, right? And I think focusing on that, focusing how you can be of service or focusing on how you can shine or how you can just glow, how you can show up, that can help. That can give you a feeling of direction. And that is a direction that you can't really go wrong with, right? If you, if you feel like, oh, I just, I need a direction because I'm like completely, I feel completely lost, right? Then go, okay, how can I be of joyful service? How can I be of joyful, joyful service and go in that direction? Because that direction is I mean, any direction is as good as any direction, but that's a direction that is probably more aligned for you than any other direction. And also, I remember this morning when I was feeling completely like not uh, having a good time, um, I was thinking about making this video. A lot of the time I can like, the like the reading almost starts to play itself out in my head. Um, and that's how I know I need to do a video. Um, and as soon as I started 
tuning into your guys' energy and thinking about making the video, that's when I also started to feel myself lifting up, lifting out, and I started to feel better. So you might think, oh, I can't be of service to anyone right now because I'm a mess, <laughs> right? Well, just feel into how you could be of service because that might help you stop being a mess. And then there's also the fact that you don't need to be perfect. You don't need to be 100% ready. You don't need to have all of your shit together in order to show up for somebody in an authentic way. Just worry about being your authentic self and then doing authentic things and the universe will sort out who that helps and how it helps them, right? Dream big. Dream with your heart. One of the functions of confusion is that it actually helps us past our own limitations because the mind, the mind is the thing that feels like it gives you clarity, right? But really that clarity is limiting because your mind only gives you ways of operating that will be fixed, that will be relatively sure of success, you know, it, your mind is trying to give you ways that are tried and true. And of course, we're not in a period where tried and true is what we want to be doing. We want to be going out there and walking into the unknown and doing brand new, big, big things. So making your peace with confusion will help you dream big. You won't be able to dream big if you're stuck in your old mindset. So it's like the confusion, the state of chaos is like releasing you from the bondage of your mind, <laughs> releasing you from the bondage of certainty and allowing you to drop into your heart space and just dream with your heart, right? Dream with your heart. <sighs> I'm going to leave you guys there. <sighs> Sending you all the energy of the violet flame. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.